You are listening to The Michael Lodge Show. Wealth, business, and taxes. Oh, yeah, and some politics. Let's get started. Okay, let's get started. Good morning. It's Monday. Can't believe it's here already. We just went through the weekend. Seems like the weekend went zapping by. But we're here we are. We're back on Monday. Lots of things to do. Lots of things to get done. Lots of people to talk to. Places to be. Well, that's how it used to be. Now I'm just stuck here in my office at home. <laughs> and everybody comes to me through Zoom. Listen, yesterday I spent a little bit of time on TikTok. I sinned. I did an evil thing. And so anyway, I was just listening to everybody that was that was on there. And I've come to the conclusion that everybody needs to just chill Don't be angry. Stop this nonsense because what you're doing is you're creating conflict. I was listening to some conversations yesterday about individuals who work for the airlines and how they're being spit on and and attacked and everything. And I know, yes, that does happen. I've, I've witnessed it myself. But I want you to know, those of you working in the airline industry, conflict starts when words are said. Okay, And you have got to realize that right now everybody is pissed off. They're pissed off about having to wear a mask. They're pissed off about having to wait in line. They're pissed off about what people are talking about. Everybody at the moment is pissed off. So the tension level is tremendously high. So when they go to your ticket counter and they're waiting to get on board, Listen, the ticket people there are not all that friendly. Some are great. I love them. I've never had a problem. But I have seen some really rude remarks and how uh, responses are back to the customer. I have seen it. So right at that very point in time, conflict begins. The tension begins. Then when they get on board your plane... And just by the way that you act or by the way that you try to, to tell people what to do people are already going to take it out on you because they've already had it in the lobby of the of the airport. They've had it when they got into the ticket counter, and now they're getting it from you. So expect that the tensions are going to be high. No one's getting on board that plane a happy camper anymore. There's a lot of individuals who are getting on board that plane who have just had it that day. Now, to deal with conflict, you have got to be very careful about the words and the actions that you do. We all understand that you have a set of rules that you have to enforce. But listen, you're not the enforcement police. You are the enforcer, but the way that you do it, the how you talk it through the situation is going to get you results. But if you are going to go up to individuals and immediately begin to attack them, expect an attack method uh form of response back listen we see this in mediation all the time if you come into that mediation with an anger mode you're going to get pushed back as the mediator i'm the one that has to has to calm everything down let individuals speak without being spoken to at the same time but let them speak listen to them and then look at the action that needs to be taken so i want you to understand that when people get on board your planes They are pissed off, and your response level, your words that you use, can be effective, or they can create more conflict. It escalates. Words create conflict, and then more words escalate. Oops, I just hit my microphone. Sorry about that. But I'm seeing this in a lot of different situations where people nowadays are just plain pissed off they're mad at everything i was talking to an individual somebody posted something on an abortion and just to let you know i am not for abortion and the reason why you see i was adopted when i was a child i was a little baby less than less than a week old and i could have been put to death because it was at that time in the 50s where people went and had an abortion now my my birthing father was 
a military guy at Camp Pendleton. My and I don't know who my birthing mother was. I don't know uh, what she was if she was a civilian or not also a member of the military. But one day that father came to my uncle who was a chaplain at Camp Pendleton at the time and he said listen I really need your help we just had this baby and we want to put him up for adoption we're just too young to take care of this child and so of course my 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 uh, uncle said okay yeah I know of somebody and they found my mom and up in Yakima Washington they drove down and got me but it was at that time period where people were driving across the Tijuana border and getting abortions down there. Now they could have made that decision that said we we want, we don't want this child and we're going to abort it. But they didn't do that. They decided there was a family out there somewhere that would like to have this child. And I was a result of that. Now I could have been aborted. I could have been killed. I could have been murdered. Those are the words I'm going to use because that's how I feel about the protection of my life. So to me, abortion is an important subject for me only because I could have been aborted and I could have been killed. So I was talking to this young girl, explaining to her what my feeling was about abortion. And it was a civil conversation up until that point. Her response was, well, it would probably would have been better if you would have died anyway. She didn't like my answer to her. So she wished, wished that death would come to me. Or I should have been killed at that moment in time when I had been born or conceived. The problem with politics, and I, and I talk about this so often, politics corrupts everybody. And if you're unwilling to listen to the other individual's story, you're going to have conflict. If you're unwilling to address the situation in a way that individuals will listen to you and you will listen to them, that conflict is going to get escalated and then pretty soon somebody's going to blurt out, well, you should have died also. You see, anger has to do a lot with hatred. And we have had so much hatred over the last 10 years of this nation that literally everybody decides that they can say whatever they want to another individual. There's no thought process into it. You see, with hate, it doesn't take any thought. It doesn't think, it doesn't take any thinking. You're just saying the same old mean stuff and hateful stuff all the time. But you never sit down and have a meaningful conversation with another individual to see what their point of view is. Hate doesn't take any thought, but listening takes some thought. Thinking about how you're going to respond to situations takes thought. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing, because I want to get back to this, is that a lot of us in our jobs have not been taught how to deal with conflict. Conflict of another employee, conflict with a boss, conflict with management, conflict with a vendor. We are not taught how to deal with conflict. The airlines industry has not taught their personnel very wisely on the area of conflict. They have taught them on how to respond. This is the law. This is what has to happen. These are the mandates. This is what has to happen. This is what you've got to do. But they have not taught anybody about how to deal with conflict. Into Instead of escalating a situation, you are bringing the situation down to a level where you can communicate better. I've seen some individuals in, in airports where they have literally been kicked off planes because an individual at the counter has said, no, your bag does not fit in that on the plane, and it did fit. She lost her flight, and she couldn't get to see her father buried. I have seen those situations. I have seen testimony after testimony after testimony about the treatment of customers and and, uh, passengers on planes. You see, it goes both ways. Because there are individuals, when, when they get on your plane, they are going to break up 
or not break up, they're going to shout out and they're going to do whatever they have to do because they think they're protecting their rights. And individuals on the, on the plane who are employees do not know how to respond to that conflict. That's why I'm beginning to wonder if airlines don't need to have mediators sitting inside the airports now to deal with the conflict and to resolve the conflict before people get onto the plane. Now, sometimes when you're on the plane, you don't know, but individuals, it's got to be at least one individual on that plane that is an employee that knows how to deal with conflict. And should always be the point person of conflict. And you and I have got to be able to understand what conflict is all, all about and what our communication practices are during conflict, how our movements are doing conflict, how, what our listening skills are doing conflict, and how we are thinking about the words that we use. We listen, we pause, we think, and then we respond. But a lot of you are the type of individuals. I had one individual the other day because I, I, you know, I have all of these, these podcasts and blogs and vlogs that are out there on the social network system that we have. And sometimes people get into some very, very long, dramatic messages to me. I had one lady that literally, literally sent me 25 paragraphs yesterday of trying to fight her argument. But you see, the problem is, is that a lot of these arguments are just spin of what other people say and not thinking about the the situation or the topic at hand. And the key to every conflict is to keep the topic at hand. What is the situation at that moment and what needs to be addressed and not veering off into other tangents. If you don't know how to deal with conflict, you are going to escalate it. And once you start making threats to the other individual, it could be the passenger to the to the individual to the to management or to the to the uh, uh, flight attendant, or it could be the airline to the customer. If you start making threats, you have just escalated the situation, and you've made it worse. So I'm suggesting that all of us go out and get some type of conflict management. If you could have, go to LinkedIn. Go to LinkedIn. They've got all those free seminars that are there for you. Some of them are like two hours long. Some of them four hours. Some of them one hour. But they've got a whole bunch of training videos there on conflict. Conflict within the office. Conflict with, with customers. Dealing with conflict. Dealing with negotiations. It's a whole bunch of information that is there that is free for you to to take advantage of. The words that we use, the actions that we do, create conflict. And then how you respond to the other side can escalate conflict or bring conflict so it almost ends. In mediation... Every single day, I deal with conflict with individuals who want to come to the table and they want to get their way. And then as we begin ta- listening, as, we, as they begin telling the story, we begin listening, we begin making notes, I begin asking questions. We finally get to that point that says, yes, I think we can resolve that. I think that we can go in another direction with this. And sometimes those individuals that are so angry come to the table after they've learned how to listen and now they've got opportunities to put options on the table. You know what? Then let's try this. But if you don't deal with the conflict in a way that is going to de-escalate it, you are going to be so focused on your anger and your hate that you have just escalated it right up. And you've got to realize that. Listen, flight attendants, when people get on your plane, they are already pissed off, they're frustrated, they're angry. And then the way that you respond to them as the enforcer, you're going to get 
negative feedback that's going back to you. And yes, it can escalate into violence. I implore every single one of you who is dealing with the public in this day and age to get some conflict training. And those of you who are running companies like airlines and, and all kinds of different forms of entities out there that are dealing with the public, make sure that you have a mediator on board so that they can respond to any type of conflict within the workplace or within a vendor or a contract situation. Make sure that that mediator is, on, on, uh, is ready to respond because the, the larger the conflict and the more the conflict that you have, the more money that you're losing within your corporations and companies. Now, th- those guys on, on, on the airlines, and you have these conflict situations, that conflict situation you may think may be just between you and that passenger or that passenger in the airline staff. You may think it's just between you two. No, it affects the whole plane. It affects the whole staff. And once you have to start delaying people going and, and uh, dealing with all of the other legal constraints that you have with the FAA because now you have conflict growing within a certain portion of your passenger level, you're going to lose money. Conflict loses money for every single company out there. Listen, we have conflict every single place that we go now. And we've got to know and understand how we deal with conflict. So there's a lot of free stuff out there, especially on LinkedIn. I, I suggest and, and I'm, I'm going to push you guys, go to LinkedIn and take some of those, download some of those conflict uh, classes. They're free. There are professionals that deal with it every single day. Take advantage of that learning process. We are human beings, so none of us are going to be perfect. That's just a given. I know I'm not perfect. Far from perfect, because people have told me. (laughs) I don't see it, but people have told me, so I guess I've got to go by what they say. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Because I'm telling you that right now. You're not perfect. You are not going to be able to deal with every situation in the most highly professional way. Because you are a human being. And human beings are gifted with this process of emotions. And sometimes the emotions get out of hand. Because we're already pissed at something else that happened before. And now it just whelms up and it blows. So you and I have got to deal with conflict better. When you come into a mediation session, especially on, on divorce situations where the tension is really high, all of all, you know, it's just high, it's up to the mediator to, to take both persons aside before the actual pure mediation session and start working on the communication process and begin working on telling your story. Because how you tell your story to the other individual is going to make the situation in uh, the 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 situation in a in better in a way that the other person has actually listened because you have now formed your story and the other ind- and you're going to listen to the other individual because now you know that the process of this whole mediation session is about listening A lot of times we listen to be able to form our argument instead of listening to understand their argument. And when we stop listening, then conflict grows and it escalates to to sometimes some very dangerous situations. Conflict is around us every single day. We see it on social media especially. I mean, social media is just one big old conflict pool of nonsense. Because people feel as though that they don't need to listen. Instead, what they want to do is just argue back and fight back and call you names and belittle you and and, and, and all that other 
issues that create escalation of conflict. And so what happens on internet? The other side gets all angry and they begin making threats against you. And then you wonder why people are so angry at you because of your message and the way that you told your message. And how you responded to the responses coming back to you. So my suggestion this morning, on this Monday morning, take advantage of all of this free stuff out there on the internet on conflict. Study conflict. It will even help in, in dealing with issues within the family. There's lots of conflict in, in families. From the moment that you w- wake up, there's conflict. <laughs> and also, when you wake up, you begin as a negotiator. Thomas, you've got to get up at 9 a.m. Get up. He's not up. So then you begin negotiating. Listen, if you don't do this, this, and this, we have you. F- f- then you have to go over and do this. Okay, this is a negotiation. No, I don't want to do that. Can I do this? You begin negotiating. The moment you wake up in the morning, you wake up your children, you wake up your husband and wife. Ne- the negotiation process begins, and the way that we deal with that negotiation process can either escalate into conflict and conflict into other stuff. Or we can negotiate very well and resolve the situation and move on to the next issue that comes along during the day. See, it's up to us. You know, we have these two things on both sides of our head that's called ears. And those ears are connected to our brain. And our brain is the part of our beautiful body that listens takes out the things that we need to keep and those that we don't need to keep, looks at opportunities. Our brain is there looking for opportunities on ways to resolve conflict. Our brain is working in there to negotiate a good deal for both of us. You see, in mediation, we always have to tell everybody, we have to treat this fairly between both parties. This is not a win-win situation. This is where we treat both people fairly. And people put options on the table and we have the ability to say yay or nay and come to another resolution. Conflict. I tell you, it seems like I'm talking about this almost on a daily basis with people on conflict. Well, well, probably because I'm a mediator. (laughs) But I'm, but I'm talking about people that I'm having conversations with just in a normal uh, walk of life. We're talking about conflict. And I'm even seeing it in churches where there's conflict because politics has melted its way very sneakily into politics. And politics always creates conflict. Politics never solves anything. It never resolves anything. It never comes up with answers. But what it can do very effectively is create conflict. I tell you, I think the devil knows that, and he he uses it to his advantage. And we fall for it every single time. Conflict. Go out and get trained in it. Talk about it more with people. If you own a company or if you are a leadership, within leadership of a company, focus on the conflict that's there. Hire a mediator to come in and help you through that process. Because the longer the conflict builds... The more money that you lose, and th- th- you will have a higher uh, a rate of individuals leaving your company because they don't know how to deal with the conflict that you're creating or that you're allowing to be created. Listen, that's the end of my podcast for this morning. Listen, if you like my podcast, and you like my blogs and vlogs and podcasts and everything else that I do, Go to www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash Michael Lodge. Again, that's buy me a coffee, www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash Michael Lodge. Now, 
as of October 1st, that's going to be a paid subscription. So if you want to get in and, in on it now and want to go back and read a lot and listen to a lot of what I've said, go there and, and do it now before October 1st because October 1st, it becomes a year-long subscription. And it's time that... Um, it's time that the all of the content that I worked on become monetized. I'm sorry about that, but that's just the way it is in life. For four years, I've been doing my podcast, and I've never charged anybody for it. I've always given free education on my podcast, because that's really what it was for, to provide education. But now that I'm doing the vlogs and the blogs and the podcasts on a daily basis, and I'm providing it to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I think it's time that I monetize it. It's about time. Um, listen, if you have a business question, I encourage you send it to me. Send it to um, um, send it to uh, two two places if you want. Info at lodge dash co dot com or uh, mediator at lodge dash co dot com. And if you want to know what I do during my daytime hours. It's www.lodge-co.com. So, it's Monday. Let's get at it. Let's get to it. Everybody, have a great day. God bless. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. This podcast has been produced by Michael Lodge, fully focused on content.